Welcome everyone to the next episode of Yosemite Valley and the brand new Aquatic DLC or the Aquatic Pack, however you want to call it. Today you're going to see the seal habitat, the grey seal habitat, which is in fact replacing the um, before installed sea lion habitat. So, um, of course, we don't have a sea lion in the game before you guys go crazy. Um, this is going to be a refab, so to say, or like a, a repurpose of the existing sea um, lion habitat that I made also like as implied habitat back in the days where we didn't have any sort of uh, aquatic animals in the game. I just wanted to have it because, you know, as I always talked about the fact that I couldn't imagine this thing being uh, done without aquatic stuff. So this whole entire Yosemite project. Now, as we do have them, they just fit perfectly into this habitat. And oh my God, can you see this? Can you see all the green stats? Can you can you just see it? This is like a few minutes in. And before we go actually into the build, and um, there will be a real-time portion at the end, uh, which will be a little bit, uh, you know, uh, jiggity and a bit more leggy because the, the file really is pretty big by now. Um, but I'm gonna get a new computer this weekend. So hopefully um, next week we can, we can make a really solid new tour, which hopefully has a bit of a better performance, but we shall see. Um, but now, first of all, I don't know if it's true, I have a suspicion that Frontier used my Yosemite Valley to actually check out uh, the habitats, because there is just no other way. I can't explain, but this habitat, with just a few minor changes, is a hundred percent of everything for the Grey Seal. The requirements are on spot. The Everything is on spot. The traversable area is on spot. The swimmable area, the navigatable area, everything is on spot. Like there were a few little things I needed to change. You will see this now through the first part of the habitat build. It's just changing a few rocks to make them move a little bit further back so that we have a tiny, tiny bit more of uh, space available. But other than that, the animals and everything is just like, as you can see, it just works. I'm, I I was just completely blown away by, by everything because I, I thought I need to completely rebuild this area. But no, instead we could focus on making it a lot more beautiful to the front. I, like the whole viewing gallery in front of it will be completely redone till the end of the time lapse. And oh my God, I'm so happy about it. I'm just so happy about it. You can see this is by the way, just changing the back part of the habitat. Now you can see I didn't really change that much. I just, you know, rotated a few rocks here and there and that's just about it. And if Frontier really tested this in this park file over here, if they did. So first of all, you can see the plants over here. Yes, that is, these are not the new plants. This is just the stuff that I used. And you will see in a bit that the new plants they are giving us are looking pretty much the same as my stuff, just like 10 million times better and also just like one piece instead of 20 rotated elephant grass pieces. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's true, that would be ace, but even if not, they did a fantastic job in, in making these animals go into real habitats like that. Because as I build this habitat, and it's, it's quite a while ago, I will put the link in this video so you can see when we actually build the habitat and what my idea about this is. It, the whole habitat was meant to be a lot more on a real zoo habitat like scale and nothing really crazy. Like something you would actually see in a real zoo being a seal habitat. So. I, I'm still like very much blown away by the fact that it worked and I again I I thought when we were meeting those new animals in the game we would kind of discover the same disaster as as happened with the polar bear you know I, I still remember everyone was was going crazy like oh polar bear everyone was preparing the habitats and then the polar bear just came in with a demand of 12,000 square kilometers of size and everyone was like yeah, no, that's, I uh, don't have that, you know, <laughs> so um, at the end of the day, um, it is, you know, Frontier just surprised us uh, this time, I think, with the fact that this is a fully working animal, like from the, from the very get-go, you can just use it as you wish, and this is just very insane. And also speaking of insane, um, I'm also insanely happy by how this turned out in the end when I finally got the pass struggle done. Um, yeah, I, I just left a little bit of the pass struggle in, but you know, the major part of it you unfortunately uh, will not be able to see because I cut it all out. Oh my God, you, yeah, yeah. Path in this game is a different story. However, 
Um, you might be surprised, but I'm planning on doing a little video on the pathing in Planet Zoo, which definitely will surprise you. I'm gonna tell it, but it, it will be somewhere next week um, because I'm just going to focus on, on the aquatic DLC stuff and, and the 1.4 stuff. I have some cool stuff planned also with the um, with the Animal Talks. I did a little bit of, uh, yeah, I... Anyways, I, I went deep down the rabbit hole again, just to make sure that I, I potentially can make tours. There is a certain way of making fake tours, if you will. Um, it works, and that's kind of cool, but it, it just is a lot of, um, you know, a lot of tricks and, and tips using in there. You just need to bend the rules a little bit, um, and then you can kind of create a tour. But, well, it, it is what it is. I mean, uh, we have to deal with the stuff that is in the game and the animal talks are pretty cool i just wished you can set a certain at least now you have the animal talks but at least you could put in like a certain uh order of which the people can go there and i'm not talking about order in terms of time because i mean surely that does work if you say every tour element is another month and then it definitely is a different time but the problem is that people do not go from one spot to the other so what would be cool is if you can set the tour like the animal talk um to an order that you say okay this is the animal talk in the month of march for the seals and that is actually the step number four of the talks and i mean I don't know how it would work, but I, I think it would be cool that then at least every one of the guests would automatically always go to the first tour. Um, and if they are roaming around there and they haven't seen any of the other tours, they can just go there. Or not tours, but talks, you know. But that just like is a little bit of a weird thought I had when I was testing it. Um, back to what we are doing over here. So I really wasn't too happy with the viewing gallery. So I, um, I thought about the fact that I wanted to make it a bit more wide, you know, and I wanted to especially um, have a dedicated area for the animal talks. Uh, this is also why we're talking about this. And then at the same time to have like a viewing gallery. And um, the, the kind of way how I'm doing this over here is inspired by a lot of zoos I've been to, which is always the same. You have like a very nice viewing gallery from a raised point of view, where you always have educators or the billboards or whatever. And then you have a lower area, which is actually the underwater viewing, which is always like in a false perspective kind of way below the area where the actual viewing spot are so this is kind of you know you go down the stairs and then you have this actual viewing um, experience down here and I was I was really struggling a lot to cover this up nicely uh, but I'm very happy with how it turned out in the end with these little row piece here in the front so just that people do not go to the glass you know technically it, there shouldn't be too much happening but I think in terms of cleaning the glass and keeping it clean and not having all the kids paws so to say the kids hands on the glass all the time uh, this little bit of security roping is here just to keep them away from it I mean you won't keep them all away but most of them and then you know you don't need to have your uh, kind of cleaning cleaning staff uh, doing all the stuff all 10 minutes I think you still need to do it but one of the things that I really hope Frontier is looking into again is the shading of the water through these uh, glass walls because it's still very darkish and dirtyish, even though the water is like 100% cleanliness. And only if you're at nighttime with like very, very nice lit area, this is the only time where you have a really decent deep dive uh, or like a deep sea view point of view. Basically what we've done in the aquarium, you know, that's still the same method applies of making your habitat look very nice uh, with this little trick of usage of light. Um, unfortunately enough, uh, in, in like the sunlight, it is very hard to look into a sw deep swim animal area uh, from, from the viewing spots. It's just like, it just blocks the way uh, by being too milky. It's like very like foggy, milky. I can't even, you know, really explain what I mean. But you have seen that already, you know, a few times during this video potentially, that uh, there was a little bit of a, a very shady look to it from the sides. When you look like um, sideways or like from above, it looks very fine, you know, from over here, this angle is nearly good. Um, it looks very, very neat, you know, neat. You can look into it very nicely. But then again, when you're really in the point of view of the guests that go down, uh, it's really a little bit of a pain. You know, it's not really that great. Also, speaking of people moving down there is a little bit of a, pr a problematic thing. Um, the people seem to use this path as a shortcut to not go around on the top level. And I really have to think about how I fix this because, oh my god, this is annoying. Like, everyone is running down there, uh, down instead of standing above and then people who want to look they stand above and I planned it exactly the other way around because I just wanted to make sure that there's not too much traffic and then again now there is a lot of traffic so I have to kind of fix this but one thing I really loved in particular is what I'm doing right now um, I wanted to make sure that the animal talk area is kind of you know already um, 
shown by having some lines on the ground. So what I did over here, I, I took the simple art shapes and I drew kind of a little um, floor graphic, if you will, um, that is going to indicate where the animal talk or the education talk is going to be placed. And then, you know, you can just gather around this little thing as, as you can see over here. I just, you know, was trying to make the form look kind of nice. And yeah, this is where the animal talks is going, going to be held. Have a little platform. <clears throat> and then I even discovered this wonderful new uh, lovely letter pieces of, you know, uh, little things and uh, font pieces. And then, of course, I uh, just put down the talk area so that you knew exactly where it is. And then if you have an educator later, you know, you know exactly where he or she is standing and giving you the talk. And I yeah, just wanted to put some of these incredibly looking new umbrellas down. But then again, I decided to do it, but do it differently. It just didn't look the way I wanted it to. I tested a few things here and there, but yeah, you can already tell that this viewing area looks a million times better now. Um, it just like has this bit more white area down there. I just also decided to frame it a bit nicer by some fake rocks and putting some some soil on top of it or like mulch here in this case and then just also putting some plants on top just to make sure that it looks a bit more overgrown but of course we don't have like these crazy plants going on because you know there wouldn't be too many growing i just tried a tree for a second but then i just decided it's not really looking that great uh just simply because it would be a little bit unrealistic, so yeah. And then, um, last but not least, we definitely need to make sure everything is nicely covered so we don't have, like, ugly edges and stuff like that. I really also wanted to have um, this wonderful railing going down there, so here was the easy fix. I just cut out a little portion because you did not need to see that. And then, uh, yeah, we, we do have, like, a last couple fixes here. You can see there's a bit of a wonky thing going on here. Um, the, the path was a bit of, you know, when you build that close between water and... Uh, terrain sometimes the past malfunctions a little bit and so i was just covering up this whole stuff with a little bit of stuff and then i was also looking for some signs and so on oh my god it took a while until i found the decals the new decals in here just like scrolling down the menu until i finally found them um i you know as, as you know there were a lot of new decals and decals means like 2d graphics uh, implemented to the game of some pieces that we always build out of a million million different other stuff yeah one i just put down two clipboards with a little bit of information and then we had some actually these things are vents but i thought these look actually like a drainage so i used them as little um, drainage kind of thing which we potentially would need down here in case of flooding um and so i just put them down and you know, just to make it a bit more realistic. And then I also looked into a bit of lighting just to make sure that this also looks good. Yeah, and that's about it for the real uh, for the uh, time-lapse part. And now we are going to jump over into the real-time part. And I really hope that you guys enjoyed the time-lapse so far. But now let's have a look how this all looks in action. All right, everyone, here we are in a little choppy real-time part. Yeah, as I said, uh, the performance is a little bit a little bit bad now with uh, the new update and also with, I think, the new water mechanics. I think it's mostly about the pathfinding here of the animals um, that causes the lag. And, you know, I really hope that the new computer will do wonders. You can hear, actually, now the music from the aquatic pack I have uh, enabled over here. So um, this is um, coming from, from this education point. Um, and if we go a little bit closer here to the railing, I mean, we can, obviously, in Tagit cam, you can actually see this is how the habitat looks from, from over here. I think it looks really cool and uh, we all can agree on the fact that this really is a beautiful addition uh, to this area. Um, what we are going to do now, we are just going to go around this corner and just have another look here onto the education board. Oh my god, there came just one jump in out of this thing. I love how it just wobbles as if there's really like a weight to it. That is so cool. Ah, I love it. I just love it, guys. Hello, you little friend. Um, yeah, if we go down here, you can see this really turned out to be looking quite nice. Also, like, with the little uh, vent, or actually, it looks really like a drainage. It doesn't really look like a vent at all. Um, and then, yeah, you have just this lovely little area here down here to sit down. There you can see the... Uh, look at that. It just, like, poses for us over here. Oh, my God. The seal is just in front of us. Yeah, I, I wish if, if this could be a little bit less... Um, dirty and muddy that would look even better i guess but yeah i mean just the view from down here is pretty dang cool i mean i really love the view it's really cool it's uh giving me the vibes i really wanted to have it and also we can change the light a little bit so that the mountain in the background is not looking that weird so oh yeah actually actually it also improved the viewing of the water a little bit like not dramatically but it improved it a little bit so um you can at least see them swimming a little bit better in here so yeah, there's one coming. Look at this, guys. There's just one coming to play with us here in front of the... Oh, this is so cool. 
This is so cool. Yeah, so actually this is a very cool like underwater viewing. And now if we go up this uh, little area over here, you can see this is now uh, where we are standing and we can have another glimpse. I will definitely shut this up uh, over here. I will put a wall in because I don't want the people to watch from over here. I want them to go down at this point in time. They only use it as a, I don't know, as a little shortcut and I don't want them to do this. And yeah, if we go further along this side, we have like a second part of it. And this is our wonderful pier section. I could actually change the education board finally. Um, and then we can also go onto this uh, pier. Well, we get a baby. I don't know what this was, but we get a baby. And then we have this other portion, which is a bit more the natural area for them but um also <laughs> i just love how this one is chilling over there look at that so they're having a good time having a very good time on this lovely little rock here uh just pooped for us and now going for a little swim um that was really cool but yeah um now let's have a look from above shall we all right and here we are above the whole thing and you can actually tell guys this is this is some serious stuff over here. I really, I really do love how this area just turned out. Um, with all the uh, smaller or bigger changes, however you want to call that, but I think in, in general, this just looks really fantastic. I mean, it's if you see that in the context of the zoo, um, the area doesn't really look that big, you know? It's just like very much next here, next to our aquatic house, um, which unfortunately is, you know, for those of you who joined the channel new, which were quite a few, a few people in the last couple of days, this is an aquarium I've built in the last couple of months, and it's really um, looking really solid and really good, but the problem is it's not functioning, obviously, because we don't have full aquatic animals yet. I hope that we get them in the future, and I could now try to make it, like, fake to put some animals still in, uh, especially in this huge tank over here, in the background you can you can see this one um, I think these are four meters in depth so you could potentially we could do something over here but yeah um, but no I think uh, especially in the context of this whole area especially with the t uh, with the pier and the you know it's kind of divided into two areas uh, we do have the more zoo-ish show-ish area and then on the other hand side we do have the more um, yeah, natural pier, Californian looking stuff, uh, which I think is really cool and it, it does look um, pretty nice indeed uh, because it just offers you this view uh, here. And you can tell I didn't use the new rocks because that the habitat is mostly done in the old version. I think the only usage I had for the new rocks was here for the, for the kind of ice. And then I even used the normal snow pieces over here as the normal thing. But yeah, um, also to just quickly show you, um, the habitat is not only great in terms of uh, sandbox, this is actually pretty much perfect um, for an actual zoo, as you can see. Um, the only thing is I need to have a little bit more sand, a little bit more less uh, grass, but I think, you know, just using the brush could fix that. I mean, of course, the foliage is pretty much a big issue but I think this is uh, always the thing that I do ignore in sandbox because I think it's not really that much valuable um, but yeah you can actually tell guys um, I'm quite happy with the outcome I hope you guys are too please let me know in the comments down below um, what you think about this habitat and if you if you enjoyed today's episode of the seal habitat I need to say something I really forgot just the, the hype got me um, of course, a big thank you to Frontier who gave me the key in early access. Um, and of course, this is the reason why I was able to pull off so much stuff for you guys this week. And oh boy, this is uh, this is not the end. I've got so much more for you. Tomorrow we continue with the dome. There will be the next episode of the dome uh, habitat with the other. And we are going to start the new franchise as well tomorrow. So it's it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Um, so I really hope that you guys are uh, as excited for it as I am. And you're still not fed up with all this stuff in here. Um, and now I really would love to, to you guys to comment down below what was your favorite thing so far of the DLC. Animal or maybe rock pieces or which kind of build you've seen as your favorite so far. And I know it might be a little bit early, but what would you love to have as a next uh, kind of integration, as an aquatic integration for the game? That would be interesting to know. But now, uh, of course, thank you guys so much for watching as always. And thank you so much for the ongoing support. If you guys want to help me reach 50k by the end, of this year please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already this really means a lot to me and i would really appreciate having you in the crew um but other than that stay safe everyone and have a wonderful wonderful birthday we speak again tomorrow have a good time and goodbye